my name is Palak and I am here today with the Chair of Governors, Mr. Rick Moore, in celebration of our Full House celebrating 30 years. How are you, Mr. Moore? I'm very well, thank you, Palak. Yes, and thank you for introducing me so nicely. So, how did you first get involved with Full Hurst? I was actually um, a non-exec chair of something called Building Schools for the Future, which around 2008 um, uh, was awarded government money to the local authority, the city council, to rebuild every secondary and special school in Leicester. So that got me rather plugged back into education. And of course, one of the schools, which was very successfully rebuilt, was Fullhurst. And I was asked, whilst doing that job, actually coming towards the end of it in 2010, if I would be interested in being a governor of Fullhurst. I had a lot of commitments at the time, but I said, yes, I would do it for a year, whilst it got reorganised, because at that time it was not in a great place. Uh, but here I am 11 years later. So obviously, over the time that you've been working with Full Hurst, what would you say was one of the best memories you've made? Well, I think the best memory overall is a general feeling of how far we've travelled uh, in 11 years. When I became chair, we were in special measures. We didn't have a principal or head, and there was an awful lot to do. Um, I'm not going to say I got tricked into becoming chair of governors, but I attended a meeting one night and I think I was the only person there. So it wasn't based on merit that I became chair. It was just one of those realities. Best memories over the 11 years. So, yeah, the general progress has been remarkable. I think being able to get £15 million to create a second site um, and to do what a former principal of Fullhurst described as spread a bit more gold dust over a bigger number of pupils would be the second big memory. But the other great day, until of course it didn't happen last year, is results day in August, uh, because I always attempted to be there. I suppose to see the triumphs and regrettably some disasters, but to watch the staff giving support on that day. But also, of course, because we had an ice cream van, don't we? And that's always a big highlight for me. I don't get much ice cream. So plenty of lovely, beautiful memories of Paul Hurston. That's good. And I'm sure there were also some challenges. Would you like to enlighten us on a challenge you faced during your time? Well, well again, I, I think, uh, Palak, that, and this isn't always a fashionable thing to say, but of course, schools and colleges are places of educational um, uh, attainment. But they're also, of course, businesses. So managing the budget, for example, is a big challenge, pretty dry subject and rather boring. Um, and I, for good governance reasons, don't chair finance and audit. My, my deputy, Steve Martin, does. But if I tell you that in 2011, the projections were that we were running a four to five million pound deficit over three, the next three or four years, and we're now very solvent, and we're now able to do many of the things that we want to do, which I'll call our bolt-ons, you know, like making sure that our young people can have some experience of life, go to London, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That they're, they're challenges that you face all the time. The other challenges that you face all the time are challenges that come with being a school in an area that has a considerable degree of deprivation. That doesn't mean that everybody's deprived, but it does. And the challenges that come with that mean that so often, and I think my view of teachers in general probably changed in those 11 years, seeing people go that extra mile to give that extra help is very, very heartwarming. And the challenge, of course, is always to keep improving, building on the quality of staff we've got. And Fullhurst now in a position really interesting where it has a very high retention rate of teachers, which means we're doing something well. But when we advertise for teaching staff, we now are often, I think, inundated wouldn't be an exaggeration. Whereas before, I all, all those years ago, I almost felt as though I had got to be knocking on doors, you know. So, and they're the markers to me of a successful school. 
nice. And would you say over like through the experience and stuff, did you learn anything that changed your perspective and view and stuff? Did you learn something that was like, wow, that's really good? Oh yeah, I think so. So uh, again, uh, I come from um, an inner city area of Leicester. I was born and bred in an area called Highfields. We could talk about, I went to a local junior school called Charmwood Street and it was a very, very deprived area. And I got to a very good secondary school. In those days, it happened to be a grammar school, uh, now Fingers Vista College, Dixon College. And I undoubtedly saw the power of education without any shadow of doubt. I mean, I went on to do a couple of degrees. Um, I've been fortunate to be reasonably successful in business. I've had the opportunity to do a lot of things. I was chairman of the magistrate's court and I was a magistrate sitting for 35 years. So seeing what education can do and how it can move lives on. I mean, it's such a cliche, isn't it? But if you said to me, what is the most important thing in life? And I know good health is important. And I know for some people, um, having enough money to live on and go abroad twice a year is important. But key to a quality of life and the big key for opening doors for me is education. And I think to see youngsters move on, improve themselves, probably do better than they thought was ever possible is just a wonderful, wonderful thing to be part of. Even though, you know, I'm, I'm the crusty old chap, aren't I, who turns up every so often and takes a bit of praise if it's due and goes missing if somebody wants to criticise us. I, I'm not that hands-on, I suppose, but I get a lot of pleasure in being part of the Paul Hurst School. Very nice. So, when you were in school, what was life like when you were a student? Well, contrary to how I might look, um, uh, cars didn't have solid tyres, but it was a completely different era, wasn't it? It was the era of very, very strict discipline, although I'd like to believe that we've got that strict discipline at, at Fullhurst because I suspect there's no, there's no learning without discipline. We had uh, teachers, nearly all male, um, in gowns and mortarboards, if you know what they are. Um, and, and the big trick, of course, was to try to get, um, should I say this here, a, a matchstick into the end of a piece of chalk, because they, they still had chalk and boards, so that when the master wrote on the, um, the board, there was a little fire. Those are the sort of exciting things because I was at a boys' school, so perhaps we did those more. But um, the, the basics of education, of course, are no different. And I think the, the fundamentals, or to me as a layperson, I'm not an educationist, are for a school or college to create the environment, which means a calm environment. It does mean a disciplined environment to allow high quality staff to do their job and that job is to communicate knowledge ultimately isn't it to youngsters some of whom don't want to learn i'm sure that's not the case with you Alan, but some of whom simply don't want to learn but to see them change those attitudes around not in every case of course is is a wonderful thing to be part of so i think the the answer to the question is that the fundamentals haven't really changed okay so of course Hurst has many more successful years to come but what are your hopes looking forward for the next chapter for full house well we have we have challenges um we are part of the local authority the city council network if you like at the minute uh, we're what's called a foundation school there are challenges around do we become an academy do we join an academy chain so far, we have not gone that route, although many other schools have. But I think the message from me would be to keep doing what we've done so well, even better. So when I started as chair of governors, there were about 850 people and a poor attendance record. That was on one side. By this autumn, hopefully, there'll be 1,500 pupils on two sides with a vastly improved attendance record because again this is a 
another enormous feature. You can't teach youngsters, can you, if they're not there? Uh, but with a, an attendance record, which is about at national average level. So to me, it's to continue the progress that we've made, to be solvent financially, and to just continue with our absolute dream and determination to try to improve young people's lives and to give them the best chance possible in a very, very competitive world. So of course, when students join Fullhurst, they stay for five years and make some really great memories. Um, but once they leave, what would your advice be for those students and how to be successful in the next chapters of their lives? Okay, one of the measures of success at Fullhurst that I love is a statistic that comes out each year uh, that tells us what percentage of our youngsters post 16 are in training, work, go on to further education. And our statistic is now really high, you know. So the vast majority of our youngsters at 16 go off and do, broadly speaking, what they want to do. Yes, there are some disappointments that grades aren't quite where they might be, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I, I would say, you know, essentially build on what you've been able to achieve and to what you've been able to have at Fullhurst. Hey, and pursue your dreams. You know, if you want to be, a vet, one of the toughest uh, occupations to get into these days, go for it. And if you want to get onto a building site, go for it. And if you want to be a hairdresser or whatever you want to do, follow your dream. And you know what? Determination is a biggie. If you get knocked back, hopefully you'll have had certain things inculcated to you at Fullhurst that give you a determination. Because life can sometimes not go where you want it to go. Just keep on trying. Now, linking back to what you said about determination being key, let's say a student doesn't necessarily get the results they want on results day. Would you just like to elaborate on what your advice would be for them? Well, I think it's fair to say that we've got a very good infrastructure, a network of help and advice. Um, I did mention to you that I, uh, during my life, I've managed to get to two degrees but you're looking at somebody who got a woefully poor um, record at the old um, GCE, now GCSE. So I retook them. So um, I, I, my date of birth was such that I didn't lose too many months, if you like, but I retook them. I was, t teachers said to me, you should have done better than this. You're lazy, you know, there you are. Uh, and I retook them and I then did well and I then got good A-level grades and I then got two degrees one a bit later on in life when I took a law degree so keep going keep going life is a marathon not a sprint Lovely. now what would you all so you've already discussed about you think education is like the base of success but to elaborate more on that what would you think the three main skills you need to possess to be successful well I, I suppose it's an interesting question, really. I suppose it does depend the direction in which you're going. So if I can just stereotype for a minute, there is a view that if you want to be locked in a cupboard, just doing IT all day, that you don't need any people skills, because, you know, it's the old, old story, isn't it? We'll lock you in a cupboard, go and do your eight hours, and uh, we'll feed you a banana, and then we'll let you out, and you can go and do what you like. But the first thing to me, I think, is to be, if you can develop, keep and develop good communication skills, because life is all about communicating with each other. And it's very interesting that lockdown has put a lot of people under pressure in how do they communicate with other people. So communication skills are really, really important to me. Try and be open-minded. Uh, it's an absolute truth to me that in life, there aren't that many rights and wrongs, to be absolutely honest. There's often lots of grays. So, so stay open-minded. And I think mean, the third thing for me, try and be respectful of the views of others. We sometimes think we, we, that we live in a world where, because they said that, because they're of that religion, maybe sometimes because they're of that colour, they must be different to me. And it's, it's rubbish and nonsense. And so... Yeah, to be open-minded and respectful, I think, are really key things in relationships between us all and with each other. That's really good to hear. Um, and 
going back to your experience and how it's changed, what would you say one of your most favourite things is that's changed? So maybe the opportunities to go on trips or what has changed that you really like? Um, yeah, I think each I think each era, each generation has its own challenges, doesn't it? And its own. I mean, until I was about fourteen. I didn't get education at all. To be honest, I was a bit of a nuisance at school. I'm quite happy to say it. One or two people still remember me. And it was teachers who got me to understand that the, the best chance of having a good quality life was to get a good education. And I think that still stays just as true today as ever it did. So thank you, Rick, for answering my questions and giving such lovely responses. It was a pleasure talking to you. And it's been a pleasure talking to you, Bella.